Welcome back to Let's Play Death Spank. I'm Burning Dog Face, and last time we killed Colonel Orc, got his battle plans, uh, blew up a very large bomb that was blocking the road, and made it over this bridge just before it got bombed. Now we seem to be going into town. Shout out to me because uh, by the time you guys see this, I will have finally, finally, FINALLY gotten my first COVID shot, so that'll be nice. Ah! That's where uh, I need to find it. I know the tet is French for the head. So uh, I assume this is where I get my hands on that helmet. The Beau Nuka... Oh. Wait, no, Beau Kukel. Huh. Another war-torn town. Ah, yes, the houses that don't even have doors painted on. There were a bunch of these in the first one. Do you have any potions? I can use some food of those. Seller. Uh, let's see some of that food you're famous for, nameless vendor. No potions here. See, I would have figured a root beer float wouldn't be as healing because there's no material to it. It's just something that tastes good. You try to get filled up on root beer floats and just give yourself a uh, stomach ache. Why do I have a quest to uh, teleport anyway? Oh yeah, gets right to do that. I need to destroy the mega bomb with this bazooka to rid the bridge of orcs so that I can get to town and deliver the battle plan pouch to the army general. Destroy and mega bomb in the same sentence. It's shaping up to be a good day. The bridge back to Lay Battlefield has been destroyed. I'll need to find and use an outhouse if I want to return to the outpost soldiers. By this scared looking soldier by the Navy docks, a new helmet at Poklotet's armory in Lebo uh, Kukel. Told this quaint sounding town is across the bridge to the north. Hmm. Hmm. Shout out to Yornik, who, uh. I didn't explain a reference in uh, the first video. Just because I uh, forget that not everybody took French classes as a kid. Uh, the phrase, apples of the earth, is the literal translation of the French term for potatoes. Pomme de terre. Hey, I know you. That guy mentioned you. Greetings, male nurse. Oh, the horrors of war. Horrors? Ha! I'm having a great time! Yeah, well, people keep getting shot and then running to me for healing. I've run all out of medical supplies. Meanwhile, that sanctuary up north is stuffed with supplies. Then why don't I go get those supplies for you? Then you would be a hero in my eyes. That does sound nice. Okay. Are you the general? Uh... I feel quite confident that it wouldn't have said Army General with caps all those times if it wasn't going to be a character literally called Army General. Oops. Greetings, media personality. My god, man! Don't just stand there! We're in the middle of a major catastrophe! You're right. This war is tragic! No, not that. My radio towers are all broken. How can I cover such a great story without my radio towers? I can fix the towers for you. Uh. Well, then you're a true friend of the newsman. You'll need to collect vacuum tubes before we can begin repairs. You can get some from the robots over at the old Eisenbein place just north of town. When did you get here? Greetings again, Sandy. I didn't even notice her until the camera zoomed in. So, do you get your armor from looting monsters too? My armor has been passed down for generations. 
I'm not sure what my great-grandfather looted it from. I prefer to loot my own armor. Thank you. Why do you care about the thongs so much? Is this like a girly fashion thing? No! If we don't retrieve them, they will continue to corrupt their wearers. They are deluded into seeing their self-serving fantasies as right and just. And let's not forget the fashion implications of such undergarments. True. Not everyone can or should wear a thong. <laughs> what do the thongs do apart from no tan lines? Each one is imbued with a special power designed to enhance and motivate the one wearing it. But they're unnatural and incomplete. They corrupt anyone who dares put one on. But for some reason, Deathspank, you seem to be immune to the corruption. Ah, so we are going to uh, comment on that. Okay. See, I was wondering if this was going to make him, uh, like, eventually grow evil in the name of justice. Like, well, uh... Oh, like Superman from the Injustice games, where he forcefully conquered the entire world in a fascist regime because he felt like it was the only way to force the world to be peaceful. It was an alternate universe. Things got rough. Um... Actually, I feel pleasantly snug down there. Um, right. My theory about you is it's a combination of moral certitude and inexcusable laziness. It's true. Being corrupted sounds like way too much work. I don't even have it. I don't know how to plan a boss fight. Hey, I was wondering about that, so I'm glad that's actually a question. Where do you go when you're not bugging me? I go to my secret base of operations. Where is it? Is it a cave? Do you have minions? What about smoking jackets? It's a secret base, Deathspank, and I'd like to keep it that way. We sure have been through a lot together. Like the time we overthrew the government, using only a spatula and a shaved marmoset. That wasn't me, Deathspank. You sure? In fact, I don't think that was you either. <laughs> <laughs> Good times, though. I don't think that was you either. I like that. I do like that every once in a while, uh, Death Spank says something to make me wonder if he's just completely, incurably insane. What did you mean by the thongs were incomplete? The Master Craftsman was tasked to forge nine thongs of virtue. But due to budget cuts and meddling by upper management, he was only able to create six thongs. I suspect their incompleteness is the source of the corruption. Sounds like they should have scheduled more time for justice and vanquishing. Interesting. So, what will you do if you get all the thongs? It's not a matter of if, Deathspank. I will get the thongs. And when I do, I... Well, I will do what must be done. I'm calling it. She's going to put on all five of the other ones at once and then turn into a boss fight for Deathspank. To uh, try and take the last one from him and become all-powerful. Hmm. Open a fashion line of ladies unmentionables. We'll discuss this later when the time is right. I'd like to ask you about the thongs that are still out there. What do you know about the thong of cuisine? It was given to a mighty chef who wanted to end hunger. That doesn't sound so bad. These thongs are dangerous, Deathspank. Don't underestimate their evil influence. You can't be hungry when you're dead. Oh dear. Tell me about the thong of compassion. It was given to a powerful healer who wanted to end pain and misery. Yay. Well, that doesn't sound so bad. You can't feel pain when you're dead. Oh. I sense a theme. Can you talk to me about the thong of generosity? It was given to someone who wanted nothing more than to spread joy and happiness to everyone. Finally, a thong which doesn't solve a problem through death. Just because it is less predictable doesn't make it any less dangerous. Ah, the glass is always half empty with you, isn't it? Optimism is not a survival trait, but neither is pessimism. 
Who has the thong of cuisine? I don't know for sure, but I suspect Wharton Wandle Ranger. She is a great chef that lives out west. How great is she? Well, she's got her own TV show. That's pretty good. Uh, that's not saying much. True. Ouch. Um... Wait. Still short one. I'm wearing one. I, uh, killed Lord Von Prong, who is wearing the Thong of Courage. Hmm. Which one's missing? Hmm. Strange. Who has the Thong of Compassion? Up north in the dark forest, there are rumors of a powerful nun. Find her, and you've found your healer. Does this nun have a name? She does, but I don't have time to say it. Interesting. Who has the thong of generosity? I cannot say his name aloud, for he will know. He knows when you've oh, been right, naughty yes, I didn't, I didn't and know that. when you've been nice. Look for him in his evil lair on the frozen islands of the sea. Ooh, I'm getting goosebumps. But it is a little chilly. Not to nitpick or anything. I should get going now. Given that this game is, in fact, called Death Spank. <laughs> it doesn't seem to be the sort of game that holds up to nitpicking. But surely it would have made more sense to put Santa Claus way up north and the nun on the island in the sea. Hello, scientist lady. Call me Lucy. Lucy Eisenbein. Maybe you've heard of my father, Dr. Eisenbein. That seems pretty unlikely. He is the foremost scientist in the field of computers and robotics. He just delivered a shipment of robots to Wartons and was on his way back here. But he should have returned by now, and I'm very worried about him. I can locate your father, Lucy. Oh, thank you. I like that a lot of the quests are his idea. That actually feels heroic. As opposed to just doing all this stuff simply because people asked him to. It's not that that's not heroic, it's just more heroic when you volunteer, you know? Let's go to the public library. Hello. Greetings, timid information specialist. Shh. Calling it. Please lower your voice, sir. Close enough. You are disturbing others. My bad. Sorry, everyone. Tell me of your book palace, librarian. This is a municipal library, and I am Ms. Tome, the head bibliothecary. Here you'll find a medley of ponderous volumes awaiting young, eager minds. Volumes, you say? Fascinating. Books. You have been to a library before, haven't you? Nah, but I read about them on the internet. So we're really just going to ignore the fact that, uh... <laughs> that we went from a medieval fantasy setting to a 1940s but with robots and internet setting. <laughs> Why is it so quiet in here? It is quiet because it is a library and because I insist. Don't you think this place would be more fun with a karaoke machine? Sir, this is a library. Fun is strictly out of the question. Joviality is the gateway to chaos. Silence must be observed at all costs. How do I check out books here? Are you in possession of a library card? Will my meat club card work? Hey, one more meat and I get a free half rack of ribs. Ugh. In order to make you a library card, I'll need your name. Ah, yes. Uh... Ron Gilbert is, uh, among other things, well known for uh, writing the Monkey Island games, in case you're wondering what Guybrush Threepwood's name is doing on here. Filbert Tiberius Hagel Smasher. That's a fun name to say. Death Spank! And your date of birth? Fe Febtober 23rd, October 25th, The Ides of Marple, and Steve's Eve. 
October 25th. Your library card is complete, such that it is. Feel free to peruse the shelves and familiarize yourself with our inventory. Once you have made a selection, bring it to me. Remember, you can only check out five books simultaneously. Ten far, good buddy. Wait, there was a question there I did want to ask. Greetings again, uptight librarian. Shush! Which of these <laughs> books have the best naughty bits? There is no tasteless garbage on these shelves. I saw to it personally. Do you have that kind of authority? As a representative of the public trust, it is my duty to protect the children from obscene thoughts. Such poisonous weeds must be plucked before the garden is salted with impropriety. Uh, also, shout out to Vincer's Prodigy, now that I think about it, because I'm here, who uh, commented that if all the orcs are illiterate, who's making their weapons? You need uh, pretty exact specifications to build a firearm properly. Oh, what did you do with the smutty books? Burn them? The liberal elitists have managed to elicit a ban on all the <laughs> If it were up to me, I'd burn that smut with the rest of the trash. I'd burn the little bastards until they cried for mercy that will never come! <clears throat> Sir, the other patrons would appreciate it if you could keep your volume down. Wow, crazy much? I'm not crazy! Don't ever call me crazy! I just... sometimes... sometimes I lose control of myself when I get worked up. That's why the silence is good. It keeps me calm. Bad things happen when I lose control. Bad things have happened. Ah, uh, you kind of scare me. Don't be silly. My therapist says I'm not dangerous anymore. Anymore? She tells me every day that I'm practically normal. Practically? One never truly recovers from a psychoanalytical, post-stress, hybrid, somatical neuron disorder. I think I'm gonna stop getting to know you now. I'm just gonna go browse for a while. Well, do it quietly. Or else. <laughs> Embraceable you. Creating my empire. Look, Ma, I wrote a book. Bubbles in the bath. The eyeball monster in the hot pink sombrero. Ah, I see you found a book to check out. Someone has a book report due tomorrow. It's the Eyeball Monster in the Hot Pink Sombrero by Fanny Burgerford. Oh, I can't read it. Boo! Pancakes in Outer Space 2, Revenge of the Syrup. Oh, I can't go up or down. Not in Pluck Muckle anymore. Oh, that was the name of the town from the first game. Romeo and Julio. Hmm, how progressive. The Gherkin of Gordor. Diuretics. Ugh. English words that end in gree. I looked at this one already. I just didn't finish this. Pancakes in Outer Space 4. Oops, we lied. Love in the, act in the Age of Management Meetings. 575 haiku poems about public transportation. We journey through rain. My windshield wipers are off. But my pants are on. Ten fun things to do with a cement mixer. One hundred weeks of pulchritude. If it weren't for the fact that this game is from 2010, I would think that was a problem sleuth reference. Oh no, that's sepulchritude. Totally different. Shouting without effort! Pancakes in outer space. Backgammon. A feminist analysis. Better cooking with cats and chicken. Oh no. The Antihero's Guide to Bacon. Pips are from... Pluto, unicorns are from Uranus. 
The Dark and Stormy Night. Pancakes in Outer Space 3, The Conclusion. Oh, I get it, The Conclusion, number four, we lied. Jesus Christ, there's a time when I've just wandered around to talk to people. This might be a, uh, 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 an Easter egg. Because uh, the third game is called The Baconing, and literally the only thing I know about it is that the enemy is called the Anti-Spank. The Anti-Hero's Guide to Bacon. Oil paintings of bunnies doing cute things. Good. You are never too old to learn how to read. The Brotherhood of the Boxer Shorts. Protecting your privacy. The Seventeenth Pie War. Fairies and Tofu. Cod pieces for resourceful people. The Rise and Fall of Lord Von Prong. Well, that's freshly uh, published. Back with the Tide. Might as well finish these before I call it an episode. The Dog Food Diet. A Teenage Monster's Guide to Angst. One Thousand and One Violent Bedtime Stories. How to Wet Willy a Barrelope. I don't know what a barrelope is, but I can almost guarantee that's a bad idea. The Secret of Monkey Island Revealed. That was the title of the first game, The Secret of Monkey Island. Uh, nice Greams Finish Fifth. One Chizzard Short of a Gaggle. Shy Girl Saves the Day Gets Sparkly Vampire. The Deal with Airplane Food. Well played. And Butter Pigs. Okay, what's this say? Coming soon, your changing orc body. Learn to speak Japanese and soupless in Strumfukwell. Last thing anyone in the universe needs is to read an orcish book about puberty. And now that I'm all the way over here, I'm Burning Dogface, and I will see you next time on Let's Play Death Spank. When we, uh, I guess continue looking around town, getting quests, and, uh, talking to people. Getting to know the people of this fair town. Later!